He was killing people left, right, and center. Nobody could hold him. Nobody could stop him. So we cried to God, Lord, God help us. And then he sent us his son to be a savior. And then he said, Today I have helped it. Now, behold, behold, now is the accepted time. So people say, Oh, when I go to the church, I only see elderly people. So I don't feel welcome in the church. When I get to about 50, I will also start going to church. Well, people say that uh, ignorance because they don't know how long they're going to live. You see, as long as you have breath, you can still change and be given a second chance to come to God. You know, even though right now you are living your own life in rebellion against God, but as long as you're still breathing, as long as you haven't died, you can still change and come to Him. But the minute you die, that is it. There is no second chance. You cannot come back to this earth again. It's a permanent, forever, ever, eternity in hellfire. There are many people in hellfire today begging Jesus to give them a second chance. And he says, no, it's too late. Remember the rich man, book of Luke, who asked Father Abraham to send Lazarus to just drop, you just give him a drop of water on his tongue because of the heat. And Father Abraham says, sorry, Lazarus cannot cross from here to you, and you cannot come here either. So in that case, if my own case is doomed, if I have no chance, then please send Lazarus to my four brothers on the earth so that they will repent. They still had a chance because they were still alive. You see, that's why he said that yeah, for his own, he said it was too late. He couldn't go back. There was no second chance. But uh, my brothers are still alive and they can still repent because I know that the life that they live will lead them here. But if Lazarus goes and preaches and tells them that I'm in hell and that they're going to go to hell until they repent, they will also repent. But for that, Abraham said, no, they have the scriptures, they have the prophets. And they don't believe those, they will not believe Lazarus either, which is true. Let's go to YouTube today. You see countless testimonies of people that have been taken to hell and heaven. But has that changed their life? No, it has not. It has not. Because most people are skeptic, skeptical. They say, oh, I just made it up. Even if Jesus was to come today, many people would not believe it's him. So, telling people you've been to heaven and hell does not change many people. So, God said, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So, for you and I, we must not postpone our receiving Jesus Christ any day longer because you might live here and find that you know you still don't wake up, something terrible happens to you. All those people who died on 9 11, they didn't believe they were going to die that day. They woke up just like everybody else, happy, singing, you know, strolling to walk, said bye bye to their wives, kiss their wives, kiss their children, took them to school, and headed to work. And many died. So nobody knows when they're going to die. Only God knows that. If that's the case, and if you don't have a chance until you die, would it be sensible to surrender your life to Christ today? Because you don't know tomorrow. That's exactly what he's saying that today, now, is accepted. And don't postpone it. Don't say, oh, I have to make a million dollars first. Oh, I have to buy a house first. I have to buy this mansion first. That's what most people say. Oh, when I have everything I need, then I'll come and serve. No, it's the opposite. God says, seek me and my kingdom. And all those other things you're looking for, the riches, the wealth, everything, will be given to you. But seek me first. The same reason, because you don't know, once you're trying to pursue that wealth, you may not last, and maybe be too late. See, so he said, this is the way of salvation. For those who are listening, if you have not surrendered your life to Christ, well, God is telling you through me today to receive him today and not postpone it any longer. You might sleep tonight and not wake up. Yeah, that's happened. It's very, very possible. Actually, when you sleep, your spirit is somewhere else, so it's very easy to die in your sleep. You know? 
you must not postpone it any further. He said, then he continues, he said, giving no offense in anything that it comes to his ministry. He said, he gave no offense in anything that the ministry did not play. And that was the ministry that God gave him. He made sure there were no faults that anybody could point to and say, this is the problem with this man, or this is what this man is doing. That the ministry should not blamed. How many ministries can say the same thing on this side today? Very few. Most of them have one scandal or another, uh, fornicating with a woman, or embezzling money, or accepting bribes, or, you know, all kinds of things are going on. But Paul made sure that he did not give any cause for anybody to point a finger at his ministry. Romans 14 13. You know? Why? Because all of us have to give account of our stewardship to God. The minute we leave this earth, he said, after death is judgment. Hebrews 9 27. You have to give an account. So that ministry God gave you. What did you do with it? Romans 14 13. Yes. Anyone was further resolve this not to put a stumbling block or to cause for a cause to fall in our hands. Because this, this is any offense, no offense in anything. Okay? And it should be not blamed. Because if you give people a reason to blame your ministry or to blame your stewardship, what you are doing indirectly is, is putting the name of Jesus in shame because he's the one you are representing he's the one that has sent you you are an ambassador for christ therefore everything you do goes directly back to him if you have a ministry and you misbehave and you, you do something bad then people will say look this is not the servant of jesus if this is the kind of people jesus uses then i don't want to be part of it see, see many have blasphemed the name of god because of her behavior because of Abiba. In fact, what happened to King David when he had an affair with Bathsheba? And Bathsheba had a child. And the prophet was asked to tell King David that because of him, these angels of Satan were mocking God in heaven and saying, God, this is your so called friend, David. Look at what he has done. May we not be a cause of mockery at God. So, but in all things, rather than give a reason to blame my ministry now see what he said in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God and what approving that means showing that we're ministers of God this is what our ministry is this is what we are showing to you to prove to you that we are the agents and ministers of God now let's see what he listed much patience much patience you know we have ministers, one minister in Nigeria slapped one of the uh, congregation because she said something which he didn't like in front of everybody. And he's a very big minister. That is not showing patience. Much patience, afflictions, necessities, that means wants, distresses. These are the things that happen in the mystery. These are the things that he could show. These are the, these are the badges he could show that this is what I'm wearing. See, to prove that I'm a child of God. He didn't say, I have 10 houses. I have four aeroplanes. I have five jets. I have a university. I have a school. I, no, 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 no. You couldn't hear that. He said, patience, afflictions. Necessities, that means wants, that means lack. Distress, stripes. I mean, it was beating. How many apostles do you see he, nowadays saying that they, they were beating? Paul was beaten three times, 39 strokes on his back. Because the Jews believe that if you beat somebody with 40 strokes, then you made them the both on the flame. So they stopped at 39. Three times he was beaten, 39 strokes on the back. And one man, one evangelist from India said he saw him in heaven. And that the stripes on the staff are preserved by Jesus. Those are his, his proud marks. Okay? Imprisonments. How many people have been imprisoned? How many apostles have been imprisoned for the sake of Christ? 
in two months, that means trouble, labors, watchings, and fastings. Some people that call themselves apostles, they are so fat, they are so big, that you wonder whether they are going to fast. You know what Paul said in fastings, you have to fast in lots. You have to fast in lots. You know, nowadays all they just use, uh, you know, kind of use words. But you know they love fasting. You know, uh, an apostle should be fasting all the time because he's facing warfare all the time. You know, so Paul used fasting as one way he proved himself as a minister of God. You know, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering. Say long suffering. That means people will come and insult him. They call him names. He won't attack them. He won't reply. He just keep on going by kindness. By the Holy Ghost, by love, one thing. That means pure, natural love, not artificial love that so many people see. The kind of love we see today is love, conditional love. I will love you as long as you give me money. As long as you are nice to me, I will love you. That is not God's love, that is artificial love. But the word of truth, in other words, he was constantly teaching the word of God by the power of God. By the armor of righteousness on the right and on the left. So his armor, his protection was his righteous life. So if you don't have an armor of righteousness, then that means you'll be doing evil things, unrighteous acts. That means you're exposed, there's no armor around you. And that means the devil can easily kill you. So many people don't realize this. If you're going to serve God, you better serve him fully, completely. Live a holy righteous life. Otherwise, you're a target for Satan and he's going to kill you eventually. Because it says, armor of righteousness. That means his protection was his righteousness. If he did not have the armor, if he was fornicating, fraudulent, fraudulent activities, then there was no armor. Satan would just fly an arrow and kill him. So let's go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 4. 1 Corinthians 2 4 and 10 4. 1 Corinthians 2 4, 10 4, and 7 14. 7 14 says, But if I boasted anything to him of you, I'm not ashamed. But as we speak all things to you in truth, even so I boast him, which I made before titles, is found the truth. That's it. Okay? 1 Corinthians 2 4. Oh, that's 2 Corinthians, sorry, right around the passage. First Corinthians 7 14. Is anybody there? 7 14 or 2. Yeah. Oh, which one? Or read 2 4. Okay, yeah. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, mm -hmm. but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Yes, it's. Spirit and power. 7 14 says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the believing wife sanctified by the husband. That's where children are between. But now they are holy. See? I'm of righteousness. And 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Or 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Seven Corinthians 10, 4. That's That says, for the weapons of our warfare are not come up, but mighty through God with pulling down our strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought the obedience of Christ. So that's what he's saying, that is that arm of righteousness, the power of God, those are the things that held him up in his ministry. My honor and dishonor. Uh, evil reports and good reports as if it's deceivers yet true now so in other words in his ministry he had honor and he had dishonor dishonor from the attacks of satan people trying to spoil his reputation lying against him to evil reports and good reports all these things he experienced these were the marks of his ministry you see so don't think that because god has sent you that you're going to have a ministry without evil reports. No, no. The system would attack you, raise up people to lie against you. They would 
give false accusations against you, saying what you never did. <laughs> so many ministers have faced accusations. Like a good example is T.B. Joshua. Many women have accused him of sleeping with them. And all these things going on. <laughs> How many accusations do you even want to respond to? Too many. And they are all false. At one time, somebody reported him to the uh, government that he was doing drug, dealing with drugs in this church. And of course, we all know what happened. They came to arrest him. And they threw him in prison, the Kiri Kiri prison, for over two, I think it was about three weeks, before somebody went to appeal to the government. And uh, they couldn't find anything wrong with him. And they released him now. After those things, according to the testimony, all the people that came to arrest him, I think eight of them died mysteriously. And the other ten were retired from their jobs. And, only one of them is still, is even that only one who was in prison twice. So when you have an argument of God, you know, there's repercussions. So by honor, dishonor, by evil report, good report, deceivers, yet true. In other words, the world maligned them and said he was a deceiver. Oh, don't mind that charlatan. Do you, I've had so many testimonies about it. You say, oh, he's a deceiver. Is this, is that. Don't believe him. Said, yeah, true. But reality is doing the work of God. She was surprised us. Even I know Jesus Christ. He was called a legitimate. They called him a drunkard. They called him all kinds of names. They called him. But we know those things are not true. Satan would raise up all kinds of accusations against the of God. So all this is your experience. Don't get disappointed when. You face these attacks, you face these false accusations, these evil reports. Don't say, oh, my life is finished. No, no, no. Look at Jesus. He himself is accused. Look at Paul. As unknown, yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live. In other words, he was dying physically, but his spirit was alive. As chastened or beaten down and not killed. Because of the afflictions that he had, but he did not die. God used that. That's what 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2. 5 verse 11. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2. Spectacles to men. That was they were put on display. You can go to a shop and you see display items. So apostles on the pop were on display for the whole world. And that's because of what experience. You know, if you go on that read some of us is there. Oh. Or you put it up for us. Oh, second, second. Is that second Corinthians four plus plus two? Is that what you read? Hmm. Not walking in craftiness. Okay. <coughs> but by by manifestation of the truth, mm -hmm. commending ourselves mm -hmm. to every man's conscience That's it. in the sight of God. God, you see? Uh, no, they don't use craftiness to deceive people. You know? So people will leave us chastened and not killed. Just show that somebody was going through a lot. Evil reports, good reports, honor, dishonor, you know, uh, claim to be deceivers, yet not deceived, deceiving anybody, not killed, suffering a lot, just in means really beating down, yet not killed. Psalm 118, verse 18. Psalm 118, verse 18. These are the facts, these are the is, is proofs that his ministry was from God. We don't see him saying, oh, I live in a mansion. The Lord has chastened me severely. Yes. He has not given me over to death. That is it. He has chastened me severely, but not given me over to death. That is the life of an apostle. 
Life is like an apostolic calling. Not gallivanting around in airplanes and airplanes and, and living in all these luxurious things and all these things. This is the opposite of what we see in the Bible. There's something wrong. You know, when are we going to see the true apostles again? Who are constantly praying, who are going through all kinds of trials. Like Apostle Paul said that God gave him a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble because of the revelation that has shown to him. And he prayed to God to remove the thorn three times. And God said, No. God said, Because my grace is sufficient for you. Why? Because my power on you is made perfect when you are weak. Hmm? So, Paul said, I rather boast of my weakness rather than of anything. If you go to 2 Corinthians verse, uh, verse, verses 12, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. You'll see what I meant. 2 Corinthians 7, uh, 7 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10.
of having nothing and yet possessing all things. What did you mean by that? If you have Jesus Christ, you are the richest man on earth. Because money cannot buy Jesus Christ. Money cannot buy paradise. Money cannot buy heaven. So if you are sure you're going to go to heaven, you are the richest person. You are richer than Bill Gates. Because Bill Gates, billions, cannot buy himself his way to heaven. You are richer than he is. See? As having nothing, yet possesses all things. Why? When you possess Christ, you possess all things. In the spiritual realm, they don't regard things of this earth as important. You know, the Bible says that what is big in the sight of man is despicable in the sight of God. All these things we look up to, all this hard money, riches, wealth, fame, success that people, you know, kill themselves to get. They are just little, totally insignificant, insignificant in the sight of God. But if you have faith, if you have love, if you have endurance, if you have holiness, those are the things that are mighty in God's sight. And you and I have to learn that. As I say, is that don't build a treasure on this earth, but build it in heaven where you're going. Use your money to build a treasure in heaven. How is that? God has given you money. Use it to help people. Use it to, you know, get people on the road, use it to evangelize, then you have riches in heaven where you're going. See? We thank God for his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. We thank you for the words you to us tonight. Father, we thank you for telling us the truth and let the truth set us free. Father, let us take our eyes and things of this path Focus them on you. And that as we do your work to minister under your name, you give us the power to overcome. As we go through the afflictions that Paul did, through the necessities, the distresses, the evil reports, the good reports, dishonor and honor, show forth his righteousness with the arm of righteousness. Give us your word, give us your holiness, give us your spirits. That we can inherit the holy kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name I pray.